This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. The Office of the Attorney General on Friday, June 25th, filed documents asking the Court of Appeal to stay Supreme Court Justice Ian Winder's consequential ruling on citizenship rights and to grant leave for the ruling to be appealed to the Privy Council. During a press conference at the PLP headquarters, Attorney Wayne Monroe QC informed the media that the appeals court dismissed the Attorney General's application. I'm dressed as I'm dressed because I had a hearing in the Court of Appeal where they handed down their decision about the stay in the citizenship matter. Um, the judgment will be available on the Court of Appeal's website during the course of the day. The simple result is that they dismissed the Attorney General's application and awarded us cost. It's just another one they lost, eh? And it was for the very simple reason that we said in the beginning, the judges made no declarations, so there's nothing to stay. Mr. Monroe explained that the decision by the Privy Council was based on the fact that the judge made no final determinations in his previous ruling. In June, Justice Winder ruled that children born in the Bahamas out of wedlock to Bahamian men are citizens at birth, regardless of the nationality of their mother. It is thought that if the ruling stands, it will have major implications for access to citizenship in the Bahamas and could affect the status of thousands of people. Following Wednesday's ruling, the Attorney General said the government will now take the matter to the Privy Council. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis discussed plans to address derelict buildings on Bay Street and rejuvenate the Nassau Harbor front. Dr. Minnis touched on downtown Nassau's need for revival at the opening of Margaritaville at the point and elaborated on government plans to address the issue. He noted that these derelict buildings were eyesores and a detriment to the Bahamian tourism product. There is a vexing issue that must be addressed if Nassau is to meet its potential. There are too many derelict buildings in the city of Nassau. They are eyesores. While some of the old buildings can be refurbished, many will have to be demolished. The Prime Minister went on to outline the government's intention to address this issue through legal means. And my government intends to address this issue judiciously through legislation and other legal means. And once this is done, through legislation, we will seek to ensure that buildings in the city center are no longer abandoned and left to deteriorate. This includes government and commercial buildings. In addition to ongoing plans to revitalize downtown, which include the recent restoration of Government House and the ongoing construction of the new cruise port, he also hinted at the potential for Fort Charlotte's redevelopment as a new Central Park. As I noted before, Fort Charlotte and its envir environs should be turned into a Central Park with walking trails, facilities for cultural events and other features similar to such parks in other international cities. The Central Park's recreational feature can extend to the waterfront encompassing an upgraded Iraqi and Western Esplanade with its boardwalk. Complementing Fort Charlotte Central Park and Iraqi will be a restored botanical garden. While many of these developments are in the early planning phases, Dr. Minnis believes that as downtown is developed, both publicly and privately, hundreds of millions of dollars will be invested into the economy. As the country reopens, those who work in the tourism sector, particularly the straw market downtown, are agitating for the reopening of the facility. Works Minister Desmond Bannister, who has responsibility for the straw market, says that the downtown facility has to be opened safely. The market has been closed since March 2020. Here's Luencia Smith with more. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Public Works Desmond Bannister says that while discussions are ongoing with health officials for the reopening of the downtown straw market, the low number of vendors vaccinated add to a concern of a possible COVID outbreak. There are not sufficient numbers of Bahamians who are vaccinating. That is the concern of the government. We want to be able to open the straw market, but we have a responsibility to Bahamians. 
We have responsibility to be open, able to open it safely. Right now, I am informed that even with the staff of the Straw Market Authority, we have a low number of persons who are vaccinated. So the government has to look at all of these issues. We know that there are a number of vendors who are not vaccinated. We have to make determinations about what is best for the health and safety of our tourist industry and the health and safety of Bahamians everywhere. Now, for the most part, the country's economy has reopened, but the straw market has been closed since the onset of the pandemic last year. During the closure, the market received minor cosmetic repairs such as the fire alarm and fire sprinkler system. The electrical issues were addressed and the facility got a new paint job. If you look at what's happening in the Olympic Games now, you'll see that people are going from all over the world into Tokyo. And they're, going, they're not being able to compete in their events because they are in, even, in, even in the bubble in the Olympic Village. They're having challenges with respect to infection. So it's important that we create the safest possible environment. During his budget communication in June, Minister Bannister noted that the Straw Market Authority has had no revenue since closing. The SMA estimated a net loss for 2021 in the amount of $1,388,985.68. I'm Laurentia Smith. For JCN News. Hospital administration at the Princess Margaret Hospital announcing the implementation of measures to manage the institution's already strained services as a result of a surge in COVID-19 cases presenting at the emergency department. The new measures are designed to reduce the spread of the virus among patients and staff and to account for an increase in the number of persons having to be admitted, with the majority of them being unvaccinated. The public is advised that effective immediately, the emergency department is only accepting emergency cases. Persons in need of care for non-medical emergencies should visit their doctor's office or community clinic. PMH also advises that all elective surgeries have been suspended and that outpatient laboratory services have been suspended as well. Emergency outpatient laboratory services will resume at Agape Clinic on Monday, July 26, 2021. Outpatient services have also been suspended, with the exception of emergency maternity cases and by appointment only, oncology services, dialysis services, radiology and diagnostic services, orthopedic services, outpatient rehabilitation services, and the PMH blood bank. Patient visitation remains suspended. Hospital management apologizes for any delays in service as a result of these adjustments. Even as the number of positive cases continue to rise in Tokyo, some members of the Bahamas Olympic team have already arrived in the Olympic city. And thanks to a Bahamian-based company, the team will have an added level of protection against the coronavirus. Torino Saunders tells us more. Some comforting news for the Bahamas team at the Tokyo Olympics as concerns surrounding COVID-19 safety at the Games continue to rise. The Bahamas Olympic Committee announced that the Bahamian Olympic team will be protected by state-of-the-art face masks while in Tokyo. These masks are a unique high-tech product that has just arrived in the Bahamas thanks to the sponsorship from the Bahamian company Axol Limited that specializes in manufacturing face masks and disinfectants against COVID-19 as well as sustainable water and solar solutions. Based on a rare non-fiber mesh, the masks also have been scientifically tested by an accredited research lab in the United States. Henrik Gied Moose, co-founder and director of Axel Limited, says the company is thrilled to be able to support Team Bahamas. We're proud and we're honored that the Olympic team decided to accept our offer of sponsorship. Obviously, it's an honor to help the greatest athletes in the world to stay safe and hopefully to, to do very well in the, in the Bahamas. I'm not from here, and I learned that the Bahamas is actually the third most successful uh, country by uh, uh, capita per, per uh, inhabitants in terms of uh, winning gold medals in the uh, Olympics. So we just want to do everything we could to, uh, to continue that streak for the Bahamas. Dorian Roach, a vice president of the Bahamas Olympic Committee, who is already in Tokyo, says the committee is grateful to Axel for their sponsorship. He says the masks have been great to travel with and are very comfortable while also providing the best protection for the Bahamian delegation. Mr. Moose describes the special material in the mask and how it works to protect those using them. 
Yeah, our masks are actually a, a groundbreaking uh, new technology. So the, the filtration mesh in the mask is actually made out of very, very, very fine nanofibers. And, and that is what makes it uh, very, very breathable. You can hardly fog up your glasses when you wear this mask. And at the same time, they have a very high filtration efficacy. So they're very good at, filtra at filtrating uh, bacteria and virus. So the, the Olympics team has got a single layer mask that filtrates 90% of all bacteria and virus. And they also have a stubble ply mask that filtrates 99% of all uh, virus and bacteria. And that's why we wanted to support the Olympics team in order for them to do good in Tokyo. Each member of the Bahamian delegation has been given two custom masks, one with a Bahamian flag and one with the Bahamian colors striped on each side. Jerino Saunders for JCN News. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.